Hi everybody, I'm Jim. And I am the same Ryan from the past. Change in three, two, one. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And I got new glasses! Yes, Ryan got new glasses. So handsome. <laughs> he says, uh, sorry, that's what my fiance tells me. It's so oh. handsome. Uh, so this is the challenge check-in. It has been six months yep. since we declared challenge on. Yeah. How's your planking going? Uh, stop living in the past. Okay. Okay. Uh, the answer it. is not well, but better than it was going at the last challenge <laughs> check-in. So we'll take that. Okay. Uh, ask me again tomorrow morning. No. <laughs> but uh, no, our challenge for this year has been, and it was your idea too, was yeah. was a cover song every month. Mm-hmm. Originally a cover song and a video, and that did not fly due to time constraints. Yeah, we realize we're human and we're not gluttons for punishment. Um, speak for yourself. But, <laughs> um, yeah, cover song every month. You can, uh, and we have succeeded at six so far. You can mm-hmm. find them in the links below on our SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all available for free because we cannot monetize them because they are cover songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're sort of experiments in our style and learning because mm-hmm. uh, you wanted to play more music and it's funny when we went back in the pre-show to look at last year's challenge check-in looking at show notes show notes it, where I was in the past I had mentioned that it'd be fun to do a music thing and I don't know if that if I was explicitly thinking about that when I suggested we do music but because yeah, it was a year ago you realize that it was a year ago that I had said that and then it's it was seven months ago that I'm like hey Jim I'm really inspired by these people on YouTube what if we did that? And then, boom, that's how that happened. And that's why we're not releasing the tracks on YouTube, because then you'd compare them with people on YouTube, and we would be embarrassed. And they always have a video with their their, their uh, songs. Yes. And I think they're better looking than we are. Not with your new glasses. Well, okay. I think I just upped the profile a little bit. but So, so yeah, what is it? So we've, we've recorded six songs mm-hmm. um, as of recording this. Mm-hmm. And what is your... Like for the icebreaker, what's your favorite moment so far? Because it's been it's been a ride. It's been kind of fun. Yeah. So I think my favorite moment was how we ended up doing March's song, which was Katy Perry's Last Friday Night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I know that sounds really weird. To like two big burly guys, one that really loves metal, and one that is I don't know very soulful. Like I've come to find out in, in the <laughs> playing of music fair in I'll, March I'll to that. yeah in March we were we were gonna do walking in Memphis and I wasn't super jazzed about it because the chord changes were ridiculous for me as a newbie to the song I mean I'm not a newbie guitar player but per, like per se but for that song no experience so the chord changes were ridiculously fast so I wouldn't be able to do it well um, and I didn't really know, like, everybody knows Walking in Memphis, but when you have to pony up and actually sing it without a lot of practice, you realize you're not that great at it. So I wasn't super jazzed about it. And then you weren't super jazzed because that's, you played it in Scotland. That's your, like, a, it, a jam it, it, song it, that you did. It is literally my jam. Yeah. Um, like, well, I think when we talked about, when we did the karaoke podcast, it, it, I, I, I picked it out as my favorite karaoke song. Yeah. Ever. And it remains that way. Like, I just yeah. love singing that song. So I guess you're right. I'm soulful when it comes to making music. Yeah, so so uh, I know I'm kind of rambling on the song. But anyway, so neither of us were jazzed to do it. And and the, the how the song came about was uh, I was getting ready to, like, plug in the bass or something like that. And I'm like, hey, Jim, where's your where's your guitar cable? I want to plug into the amp. And he goes, oh, it's I think it's in my bedroom. I, I it was It's in there because, oh, yeah, I was using it last. And you were thinking about when it was, like, last whatever. I'm like, last Friday night? I did not get the joke. Yeah, he's, he's like, song. no, but okay. I'm like, no, no, don't you know the Katy Perry song? No, I'm like, I actually kind of like the song, like. It, 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 it's, a, it's an earworm for me. I like it. And so we ended up playing it, and Jim's like, fuck it, let's do it. Yeah, so and so, change of plans. Instead of instead of doing a song we weren't jazzed about, did a different song. Uh, it turned out really well. Yeah. not like uh, So we, we didn't rehearse it. Coming into the session, we didn't even have that as a planned song. Jim had never heard it. I had never seriously tried to do, like I I only sang harmonies on, but I never really seriously tried to sing the song, and yeah, it turned out really well. So I think that's my favorite funny moment uh, of the first six months of the challenge. What about you, Jim? 
Um, mine is definitely Everlong. Everlong was our <laughs> was our February song, um, and it was a tune by the Foo Fighters. And I am a fake Foo Fighters fan. I will tell you that I love Dave Grohl, mm-hmm. and that I love the Foo Fighters. Uh, do you know how many Foo Fighters albums I have listened to? No, I I I, I can recognize the odd Foo Fighters song, mm-hmm. and I really like Dave Grohl sort of as a person as I mm-hmm. see him in the news, and he's like an, he's an amazing musician. Mm-hmm. But I am I'm a fake Foo Fighters fan, mm-hmm. um, and I'd never ever tried to play a Foo Fighters song, mostly because I couldn't have told you the name of one. Mm-hmm. I just like be listening to it. I'm like, oh yeah, that Foo Fighters song. Mm-hmm. Um. So I tried a couple of different methods, and I, I finger picked it a bit, and you know, again, that sort of slow soul, jazzy version, and then Ryan here picks up my is like, hey, well, well, I was thinking something more like this, and he picks up my guitar and he down tunes it ever so slightly, and then plays the song. Yeah. And I'm staring at him. And I'm like, why did you have me working out these finger picking patterns if you can play the song? And he's like, oh, I can't really play the song. I, I learned it six years ago and I haven't played yeah, it since. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't played it. And I'm like, really? Do it again. And he does it again in exactly <laughs> the correct like method. And all it was is, I didn't even have a problem with any of the rest of the song we the, the really the only like to to fill in this part of the, the thing was you had the finger picking i was like ah it's weird but you know it'll come together once we start practicing <laughs> but we couldn't figure out what to do for the pre-chorus that kind of triplet da, yeah da, 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 da. there's nothing you could like you couldn't think of any way finger picked in order to do it. i'm like well why don't we just strum it and you're like well i don't know how to do it. i'm like oh it's like octaves like da 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 and i started doing it and then i started yeah. doing the main riff and i'm like you motherfucker <laughs> I've been at this thing for like two hours. And now, suddenly, you're a wizard. So, Ryan played the song. Yeah. And I did the vocals. Yeah. And it turned out really well. Yeah. And uh, it turned out like much better than the other version. Someday the other version will exist, I'm sure. I will like dig through our music and and dig it up. Well, it's because... Our, the joke now is that we're gonna do twelve cover songs and then a double album. This is me of slow jamming all of slow, them. slow jam covers of our cover songs. <laughs> God, like that's what's gonna happen. I was, I was in a band once that all we did, all we played was covers of color covers. <laughs> Argyle Speedo. Oh yeah! Shout, out, right. shout out to Argyle Speedo. Yeah. Um. Oh man. Yeah, that was definitely that was probably my favorite. Like we've we've had a bunch of, of really fun moments. Like mm-hmm. the first recording session when I was super cranky and then I stopped being cranky. Mm-hmm. Um, I was on a super tight timeline because I had to go to a wedding show in. Yeah, London. so we were and we were. It was the first time we'd ever sat down to do it, so we had no idea how long it was going to take. Yeah, uh, we we picked some some complicated harmonies. It was early in the morning. Gold star to that session went to Kaylee for for coaching us through the harmonies. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. Um, so so yeah, what have we done? We we have arranged and produced six songs, and we intend to do six more. Yep. Um, it's been a range of sort of genres too. Mm-hmm. Um, we had the Offspring song, the Foo Fighters, the sort of like rock songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did folk songs. We did Wagon Wheel. Yep. Uh, at your fiance's request. <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason why we did it because she wanted to hear me sing it. I think she, she, you know, and she, I, I was about to say, and she probably regrets it. No, when you sent me the raw file of that when I was in London, she was like, "It's so good." I'm like, "No, I sound terrible," but she's, she's at least she's been a good sport in supporting me in saying that she likes it. So. <laughs> um, but then on uh, Friday, we, we just released a uh, proclaimer song in, yes. in honor of our Scotland trip from last year. Yeah, throw the R away. Yeah. Um, we we are killing it in our worst Scottish accents. Yep, yep. It's uh, it's multi layered. There's a multi layer meaning to that of you know conforming to to receive pronunciation, and then as you pointed out, a two Canadians with already flattened vowels trying to mimic the Scottish accent. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> so yeah, it's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I am excited. Like, like, like I have learned a bunch. Mm-hmm. I've learned a bunch about sort of prepping songs. Because uh, everything that we, we've done so far, we've done essentially with no practice. Yeah. Like, we sit down for four hours, and I have maybe played through it twice just to get a feel for it. Mm-hmm. There's no bass line. There's no other instrumental arrangements. There's nothing like that. Break the song down into pieces. Rebuild it. Do the thing. And I find that really intriguing and fun. Uh, it relies a lot on on sort of our ability to improvise. It relies a lot on our musical chemistry. Mm-hmm. Also, more and more, it relies on our willingness to sort of fail quickly. Mm-hmm. Like if we if we're ever in argument about oh well well do we do it this way or do we do do we do it this way the answer ha- has now become we just try it yeah if we don't like it we just don't do it that way but we try it so so everything that could have been tried got tried yeah it's really weird we haven't yet had a super disagreement of of, of aesthetics it's usually one of us will suggest something and it's like I don't know let's try it out. we'll try it out and then after the tryout. Yeah, objectively, your your suggestion sounds better. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's it's not like no, actually, like uh, I think the closest we came to it, uh, the the only song that we haven't mentioned yet is the old apartment when we yeah. did it, and I, and I and I just for some reason the opening bit, I'm like, we got there's something more that's got to be done with the opening bit to pop it out, and I think in the end we both agreed that it's just because there's no drums to to really. Yeah. Uh, nail down those those notes because we re-recorded the the chords and we played it back and it's like nah it just doesn't sound right yeah. and so I mean, but we haven't yet had to like one of us had to compromise our artistic integrity to go along like to get along the go along. I also think that, that that I think where we make our compromises and I'm and I'm sort of I've been learning to listen and compromise is um there are, there are two ways to do cover songs you either uh, try and play a song that is an exact copy of the original, mm-hmm. or, and there are lots of really cool cover bands that do that. Mm-hmm. I am not a part of any of them. And I, you know, just to, before you continue, on, I yeah. feel like I am a, I am on that side of it. I would prefer yes, to, you to, are. to reproduce the the fidelity of, of the original. Yeah. The other way to do it is you take that song and you take the pieces of it and you make it into your own thing, mm-hmm. and that is firmly where I land. Yeah. Is Captain you, Slow Jam. Well, but even even without that, like I can when I when I listen to the the versions that we've produced, I can hear the 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 bits where I, I'll shuffle my fingers on a chord mm-hmm. to get a sound mm-hmm. that is that is a sound that I want mm-hmm. that expresses something that that I want to be in there mm-hmm. that isn't in the original song. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's a bunch of spots in um, the uh, Offspring song that we did where it's definitely like I am noodling around on chords because that is what I want to be doing yeah um it's the sort of it's I don't know it fits how I like to play uh but it, it is not at all faithful to the original no I, you know it's, it's funny the the first song where we had to ridiculously rearrange it was Kitty uh, Katy Perry's Last Friday Night because like we weren't we're not doing anything with electronic electronically produced music in that yep. regard, right? Yeah, we don't even have drums. Yeah, like we don't have drums, we don't have synthesizers or anything like that. We have the acoustic guitar. I think we played, yeah, we played bass on it. Yeah. Um, and then we did some harmonies with uh, the vocals. Um, but I'd heard you take pop songs and rearrange it. Beca- because a pop song, when it's done with the kind of the three or four chord progression, is very easy to map out onto another instrument. But when you have the Offspring song, which is not just distorted, but you're playing an electric guitar with you know palm muting and and uh, chords that when you throw them on an acoustic guitar it doesn't sound the same. You can't yeah. do the yeah, same you can't, thing. You can't with do the it. same thing. That was the first time where we really had to rearrange it in order to the, do it. The edge effect where your electric yeah. guitar. Yeah. It's it, you know you're, you're and no drums as you said too like we yeah. don't have drums and drums is an important part of the song. Yes, I wish we had drums. We could, uh, but but. Truth be told, not so much that we actually have them. Yeah. Well, and um, one thing that I've been learning uh, that to tie in with the drum thing is that is something we could add through MIDI drums. I'm gesturing off camera towards the, the, the piano. Yeah. Um, but w- it, what I've been learning is that 
to get those sounds, it's not really all that difficult to, to piece them together, at least in the post, because so, we've done some amazing Sounds like what you've been learning is to make do with what you got. Yeah, I mean, I you've been wonderful in pushing me vocally in terms of, Ryan, like, you can do this better. What's, what's your favorite phrase for that one? Uh, you have to commit. Yeah. Commit, commit harder. Commit harder. Oh. So you would tell me to commit harder, sing with conviction. You'd tell me to... Put my chin up yeah, so that like it literally, opens up. literally look upward. Yeah, I remember. Uh, you know, it's uh, like I'm, I'm, I am. I'm a loud singer. I always, I, I learned to sing in choir, and so I always, I always sing from my feet, mm-hmm. and I, I like, like I'm trying to fill a whole room, mm-hmm. even when I don't have to. It's really awful at coffee houses. <laughs> Um, I've definitely been called out on where they're like, you're really loud. I'm like, Mm -hmm. yeah. I was trained through karaoke where I learned to manipulate the soundboard that I could get what I needed to do without having to commit very hard to it. Yeah, no, I just use, like, I don't need a mic. (laughs) It's a courtesy. But, yeah, it's been really interesting to sort of, to sort of, like, Pushers like I like I, I like what you did there, but I need you to commit harder. I need you to believe in this line mm-hmm. and push it out of your body yeah. into the air. Yeah, and we've we've done other tricks to help facilitate that, like the having to stack the music stand <laughs> on a TV stand. So you can see the so music. That the music, because I I realized when Jim was like open open up your chin so that you can you can project. I realized that I couldn't then see the words. <laughs> <laughs> and so we we now put it up so that the words are at my eye level and I can I can sing with my head up. Uh, my uncle Terry, I sent him the the link to the SoundCloud and he says, you know, he's like, you know, it's it's really good because he's he writes music for country music uh, and he's had some songs uh, picked up professionally. Um, he's like, y- the next thing you should really do is get in ear monitors. Or somehow be able to hear yourself sing because it'll be that much easier for you to be clearer when you sing. Yeah. And sure enough, we tried that out. We, <laughs> Jim, bless you. <laughs> Ninja, Ninja worked the the equipment so that we could indeed record and record to the the, the computer and record so that we could hear ourselves as we were singing. The studio was a mess of cables yeah. and equipment. Yeah, so it worked really well. Um, or just the the post production, like when on the Offspring song when we added our first lead guitar part, mm-hmm. like it was we transposed it because we had to change the the, the it was in a different tuning with the capo, um, and just yeah recording a lead part and trying to get that to slot it in and it's yeah it's it's been sort of fun. Um, I I am I am the biggest proponent of work with what you've got. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that does is it is it curtails my ambition. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what have I got? I've got my voice, and I've got an acoustic guitar, and I have like recording software. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. And so I don't often like push to like add a bass, add secondary guitars. Like I have other guitars. Um, I have pianos, which we've, which we haven't touched yet, mm-hmm. and hopefully will at some point. We'll it would, see. It would be nice. Um. But, like, you know, my, my, my joke for instruments is always I, I play well enough to sing along with them. Like, mm-hmm. like I, what, <laughs> what I am is a singer and I love singing, but you can't just sing places. you got to have music, so I have a guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, it's been, in, it's been interesting, like, because one of the commitments that I made during this was... I don't want to sing lead on more than four or five songs mm-hmm. over the year mm-hmm. because we want to use this as a way to like, like originally in, in, in the first challenge podcast, you were like, I want to, I want to, I sang a lot in Scotland. It was really fun. And I want to develop my vocal confidence. And, yeah. and so I want to, I want to push that. Um, which means now I get to sort of take a back seat and focus on production. Mm-hmm. So where do we go from here? Just before we answer that question, oh, I, I had an oh. observation that I realized got as, as we're filming. Um, how we record music is almost the exact opposite of how we record the podcast. Our oh podcast, my God, it is. Our podcasts are a lot of a lot of prep lead in time, and we shoot it in one take, and it's done. Our music is very little prep. Like you, you prep. 
you know, le- coming into it with playing the songs, but we do very little prep until we come together, j- kind of jam it out, and then we do iterative takes of we get it until the rhythm's done, then we re-record the vocals on top of that, and then we go back and I probably have to record the vocals a couple times after that. I mean, that. to be fair, you could do the podcast like that too. It'd just take you three or five hours to edit. Yeah, it's so much easier to edit the, the, the wave, <laughs> wave tracks, but it's, it's funny <laughs> how our the, recording the, the songs is, is almost the exact opposite process of the One Take Wonder podcast that we are. <laughs> So I just wanted to throw that yeah, in there no, before that's, we, that's, we go You're on. right, though. Like, like, we spend a bunch of time. I, I, so I, I think that we do spend a bunch of time sort of thinking about and talking about how we want the song to come out. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, there is definitely there is definitely a point in the in the sort of the, the music production bit where it's put up or shut up. Yeah. Like, like it doesn't matter how you want it to come out. You just got to do it and see what you have. And then find a way to make that good. Yeah, and then we super collaborate on editing too. Yeah, which is yeah. which. Now that we have a headphone splitter because <laughs> of the streams, um, we uh, we it, it has gotten a lot easier. Like mm-hmm. like it's interesting to see the, the like the small efficiencies that we've been introducing and the things that we've been learning hardware wise. Yeah. Um, so yeah, where do we go from here? Yeah. The answer is we make six more songs. Yeah, that's, that's um, the first step. We're gonna do some Carsey Blend. We're gonna do some I Fight Dragons. We're gonna do some Stan Rogers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joko. Yeah, uh, can't be a nerd band without doing a Joko song. No. But probably not the song you're thinking about. No. Uh, whatever that song happens to be. Missed out on doing the first of May, for instance. Yeah. Just I, missed that boat entirely. Yeah. To be honest, I wouldn't mind doing Skull Crusher. Hmm. Because that was a fun song to do in rock band. Fair. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, no. If, if you if you try and be claim to be a nerd band, but don't play any Joko songs, you, uh, I'm pretty sure they just hang you. Yeah. They just they just take you out, back and shoot you. Mm-hmm. Um, we obviously don't want that to happen to us. Please, please don't come for us, Jonathan Colton. I don't know. He seems like a pretty cool guy. Yeah, that's I don't fair. think he's coming for us. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. Yeah, six more songs, additional challenges, additional production challenges. I would, I do want to bust out the piano. Mm-hmm. And I am excited for where that goes. Yeah, and I, I say where one of the areas that I'm looking forward to is pushing, pushing the instrumentation side of it a little bit more. Uh, I got super jazzed when we first added the bass guitar on top of the rhythm guitar, and then I got super jazzed when we had bass guitar, rhythm guitar, and then a lead like lead licks. I don't. I'm not saying we need to be Iron Maiden dual rhythm guitars. But I'm, I'm I'm interested to see if if it's possible. I'm to down be for Iron Maiden. For, that seems fine. Well, uh, okay. Well, let's try to make an acoustic version of, of an Iron Maiden <laughs> song. But run uh, to the hills. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even. We'll we'll figure it out. Uh, leave your song suggestions yeah. in 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 the uh, uh, comments. Uh, as always, you can find us on Twitter at Wootsuit, uh, or uh, on Facebook, on Patreon because we have a Patreon now. But more important for still this, still on that. But more important for this podcast, on you can find us on SoundCloud. SoundCloud, <laughs> SoundCloud, in addition to having the playlist for all of the uh, uh, brain. Oh, my brain just totally stopped. In addition to having the playlist for all the, the songs that we've been doing, um, it also has the Christmas playlist for with uh, Kaylee and I. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll also, um, by the time this goes up, it will have. Uh, that's strictly not true, but no, it, it, I'm not sure of it. It'll have. Uh, a couple of tracks that didn't make it onto the album, oh. but that are from the same set that we recorded the album from. Very cool. So there, yeah, there will be some. There, there's some cool stuff there. Um, you can find Huck on Twitter, mm-hmm. RJ Huckle. You can find me on Twitter at Concept Crucible because I stole the name from the blog. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for the next part of this challenge. Me too. If, if if this first six months are an indication of anything, I'm really looking forward to seeing where we go from here. Fast forward to the challenge finale where we're not friends anymore. No. <laughs> we are the Beatles and we've gone our separate ways. We'll have one more rooftop performance. If if Sarah Yoko's me, I'm not going to be in your wedding. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'll still be in your wedding. Okay, That's cool. <laughs> anyway, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome.